Hi, uh, my name is Professor Sal Deshaq. I'm one of uh, the gastroenterologists and interventional endoscopists based at Russell's Hall Hospital. And today I'm going to talk over about endoscopic treatment of Zenker's diverticulum. I have a few slides of illustrations about the procedure. I hope that will help uh, patients to understand what exactly we do when we carry out endoscopic treatment of Zenker's diverticulum. Well, Zenker diverticulum is a rare condition in which a large sac develops in the upper part of the esophagus. Now you see on this slide, the picture on your left is uh, the radiology picture in which a barium was given for patients to drink. Then you see a, a sac appears, that is the pouch. And normally it should not be there. And the picture on your right just shows uh, the sac. And then you see in the middle is the muscle that we call caracopharyngeus muscle. And this muscle uh, is the real problem that goes into spasm mean doesn't allow the food go into the food pipe hence this back pouching occurs and the pouch develops now this one to illustrate a bit more the picture onto your left is the what we see when we put the telescope down the throat you see the top which the green arrow has a food pipe we also call it the esophagus and in the back you see the pouch in between is that culprit muscle that muscle shoots uh, the gate into the gullet, so all the food, rather than going into the esophagus, or the food pipe, uh, traps into the pouch that causes a problem. And also the cartoon onto your right will show you the pouch, will show you uh, the esophagus, and you see the CP muscle that we call the caracopharyngeus muscle is right in the middle, uh, act as a partition between the pouch and the esophagus are the food pipe. Now what causes the pharyngeal pouch and what are the symptoms? We do not have deep understanding of what makes a pouch, but it is the poor coordination of the CP muscle that I alluded earlier that causes uh, the top of the, your food pipe to go into spasm, hence the food tracks backward makes a back pouch and that turns into a pharyngeal pouch. Uh, the incidence fortunately is low and usually it affects patients in the 7th and 8th decade, but we are more and more seeing patients in younger age. Predominant symptoms are swallowing difficulty, food regurgitation, recurrent chest infection, and choking, particularly the patient found very distressing, and a gurgling noise in, in the neck. These symptoms could trouble patients after meal or at bedtime, or sometimes patients are woken up with the bouts of coughing. Overall, it does have a significant impact on quality of life of patient. Now, the, traditionally, our ENT colleagues have done uh, what we call a surgical myotomy, uh, which is the picture uh, below and on to your right, uh, in which a general anesthesia is required. Uh, it is a good operation in suitable patients. But as uh, you will see that Zenkers does affect patients in, in later part of life. Hence, they have a lot of comorbid issues in the heart and the lung. Sometimes they aren't absolutely fit to have general anesthesia. Our patients who have a very small pouch are treated in the past, but with recurrence of symptoms, these patients pose a considerable challenge and are best treated by endoscopic treatment. We introduced this in this country and in Dudley in 2012. So let me just talk about the procedure itself. Uh, this we carry out with a flexible telescope. Uh, you see that the cartoon below is, is a volunteer. They agreed for this photograph to be taken. And I have got this flexible telescope that I, we usually insert uh, down the mouth, over the tongue, into the throat. And when we go down into the throat, then you see the, the picture uh, onto your right in the bottom is the one that we see in which the top bit is the, uh, the gullet and the uh, bottom bit is, uh, and the back side is the, the pouch. In between is a muscle that we are to cut. So I will talk about more how we cut this muscle later. Now in this slide you will see that the muscle being straddled uh, on the top left of this slide 
and we have this scissor type of knife that we call the SP knife that we use to, to dissect this muscle. And you see on your right, a cartoon shows that the muscle between the pouch and the gullet has been cut all the way down, so there won't be any food trapping in the pouch. It will spill into the gullet food pipe. And in addition, this the muscle spasm that causes the problem. While cutting the muscle, we help the symptoms of swallowing difficulty. The picture below is once we cut that muscle, we apply these clips. Uh, they stay for two to three days. They will fall off and patients usually do not notice uh, the clips falling off. These clips help to secure this cut part and help reduce the complications. It is an invasive procedure and it does carry risk of bleeding and perforation that we quote to patients as 1%. Bleeding as we cut the muscle, perforation, if the cut's gone deeper, uh, then there is a risk of perforation that we also quote the risk of 1%. We've been lucky so far that we have not had any bleeding or perforation, but we always try to put clips once we carry out the procedure that helps the wound to heal and reduces the risk of bleeding and perforation. There is a very small anesthetic risk, but you will be carefully assessed by an anesthetic team uh, just to make sure that it's safe uh, for us to carry out the procedure. A small number of patients to get neck pain for day or two, we advise them to take liquid paracetamol. Although all patients are advised to prepare to stay the night, but we discharge most patients on the same day, a few hours later. We do give patients one to two liters of intravenous fluid and advise them to stay nil by mouth till the next morning when they're allowed a soft diet such as a yogurt and custard. If we suspect a bleeding or a perforation, then we treat it during the procedure, then admit patient for observation. Patient coming from outside the region are advised to stay the night. It is very important to know that very large pouches sometimes do require more than one session to be completely treated. I would like to emphasize the Zenker procedure is quite complex. It requires multidisciplinary approach. We started this work in collaboration with our ENT colleagues, Mr. Veller and Mr. Maloney, and we had a great help from Dr. Andrea Gate from an aesthetic department who took the lead on arranging a portfolio list in the GI unit. Now we are joined by Dr. Andy Downs, who also regularly carries out Zenga's list with us. We have a skilled endoscopy nursing team, and we have a dedicated GI admin staff uh, to facilitate seamless logistics support in booking and dissemination of information to patients. I hope you found this information helpful. But if you require further information, you can contact these numbers. We will also provide a link from our hub that will have more information and also the published literature that we have published in the last few years. Many thanks.